going to be learning the scriptures. Today we're going to be going off on a bit of a tangent. Here at Gleaning the Scriptures, my specialty is the concepts of the storylines of the Bible, the morals and values that we can apply to our lives, the things we can actually do differently to be pleasing to God. But in this one, we're going to go into prophecy a little bit. We all experienced the dreaded pepperoni on the pizza of earth and in some of our loved ones' bodies recently, and I'd like to open up about something that the Lord showed me a couple years ago about this. This is the first time I've spoken about this in public, aside from a few close friends. I'm very excited to share it with you. Let's learn together. Okay, so I'm only going to briefly touch on this topic, but even to briefly touch on this topic, we have to have a good, solid foundation. This topic's about prophecy. Prophecy is all about telling of the times. So in order to understand prophecy, you have to have a good understanding of what the timeline is. This is going to be a tip of the iceberg of many different topics that will give you a quick and solid foundation so that you can understand what is to come. God, our Father, He practices what He preaches. He gave the whole world to Satan. It says in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded. Who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel, the glory of the Messiah, who is the image of God, should shine on them. You see, right there where it says, this age. This age is talking about a very short time period, cosmically. God gave the whole world to Satan. He gave the world his proverbial coat. Because Satan stole his proverbial shirt. In the garden of Eden, Satan stole Adam and Eve. God practices what he preaches. Now, he's not taking his sweet time in taking the world back to him. It's not billions of years old, millions of years old, or even tens of thousands of years old. Currently, we are in approximately the year 5784. Now, the genealogical map from Adam to Messiah supports this theory. Furthermore, the cycle of sevens, God's cycle of sevens also supports this theory. Both the Feast of Weeks, sorry, both the Feast of Unleavened Bread or Pesach and the Feast of Tabernacles are seven day long feasts with an eighth day. This is a topic for another discussion, but that first day of Passover is really an eighth day, and it's a half day. And then the eighth day, the last day of Sukkot, is, a, um, is an eighth day. The seven days is the full cycle, and then the eighth day is uh, regarding a new beginning, the new beginning of something. God is not generally linear. He generally works in circles. A week is actually in a circle. Sunday is not really far away from Saturday. They're actually right up next to each other, only a minute from one another. This cycle of sevens. Furthermore, a week shows that he works in cycles of sevens. The year is made up of several dozen seven, seven day cycles. So there we have that cycle of sevens. Now, another thing that backs up this uh, young earth theory is the fact that God created the earth in seven days. On the first day, he separated the light from the darkness. And in the first thousand years, from the year zero to the year 1000, that theme is throughout, and so on and so forth. The second day's creation has the same theme as the second thousand years. Moving forward right now, we are in the um, 6,000 years, 
and we're getting close to entering the 7,000 years. When God created the earth, he created for six days and he rested on the seventh day and was refreshed. That seventh day is a rest and it says in Revelation that we are going to enter a rest. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. This is referencing the millennial reign when we have a thousand years to rest from Satan. This is the seventh thousand years. You see the parallel there? We have a whole thousand years of rest, one whole proverbial day, just like the seventh day is the Sabbath, the day of rest. So once we see this timeline, and this, from, uh, uh, this foundation of the times, we can dig into this topic a little bit more clearly. The birth pangs, my friends. The birth pangs are the key to understanding this. And I haven't heard anybody else talk about this. This is something that the Father showed me directly in my personal time with him, and I'm thrilled to share it with you. The parallels are uncanny. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. And it is just so obvious once your eyes are open to it. Like a whale is pregnant for nearly three years, our Earth is in the beginning of a very long pregnancy. Most people think that we're at the end of the end times with only just a few years left. Revelation tells us that the things that will occur in those end days are catastrophic. One third of the population will be wiped out. That's one piece of evidence that shows us that we're not there yet. One third of the population has not been wiped out. That's not a piece of evidence that we can see yet. But what did we see? In Matthew, we learn that Yeshua said, all these are the beginning of birth pangs. What are these? And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows, or birth pangs. When a woman experiences birth pangs, she's not in control of the situation. It's like blinking, or the heart beating, or the eyes seeing. You can try to not do some of those things, but in the end, you will lose the battle. It's something the body does on its own. Something has taken over the will of that woman. She's having birth pangs, whether she likes it or not. That's not what happened with It's much more like a conception. Just like sex is often filled with drama, whether between married or unmarried, was filled with drama. Just like it is man's choice whether or not to have sex, it was man's choice. It was ruled by men, the rulers of the nations decided to put in those regulations. They were completely in control of what they were doing. The parallels continue further and further and further. What we experienced during the dreaded pepperoni was not something that was out of the control of man. We're at the beginning of a very long pregnancy. And when those times come that Messiah spoke of, not even the leaders will have any control. The evil leaders, they'll be throwing their hands up and running for the hills. The good leaders will be relieved. I hope that you've taken in this message and see the truth that the Messiah has to show you. I pray that he blesses you as his vessel and gives you an abundance of his glorious light.
to shine to the people around you. Don't be afraid to share this with people. And if they don't listen at first, that's, a, that's okay. They don't need to agree with you. But it is important to plant those seeds. Thank you for growing with us today. Shalom. Hey, you're still here. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. Something I want to include last little here uh, as a piece, as a guiding piece to help you in your studies. I'm not gonna go in depth in explaining this. I'm just gonna point something out to you so that you can open up that Bible and have something to share with the Lord between you and Him because a share from God is way, way more awesome than a share from me. During the dreaded pepperoni, we had a horse that arrived. That horse was a white horse. And on that white horse was a rider that carried a bow. And it's the only one of the horse judgments. This is from Revelation chapter 6, verse 2, where the rider was given something. That something was a crown. And dreaded pepperoni means crown. And that crown was given up to him to conquer and or conquering. That's something to think about. It's part of the prophecy of what, of what we all endured over the last couple of years. And to be honest, enduring it was basically sitting around and relaxing with our families and letting the government uh, rain cash down and put a big giant debt in the economy. It wasn't catastrophic. It was stressful because there were adaptations that had to be made, but people weren't dying all the it's just a hint, just a small warning that in generations to come, these very serious things are going to happen. We need to be preparing our children to be preparing their children to be preparing their children's children for the coming of Messiah. They will need to be much, much stronger than we are today in order to endure those things. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.